Previously on the keynote, the age-old contest of men versus women was waged as the contestants competed in the race for the content challenge. And although Sean led the men into a great presentation, it was Vicky's leadership that led the women to a stellar victory, leaving the men to clean up the dishes while they enjoyed the mansion. Della Toro had his full of Bernie, not playing full out, and called her into the cellar for a powerful transformational intervention. Celebrity TV host H. John Mejia put the contestants through the paces to see who had what it really takes to transform their content into on-camera expertise. While Charles, Jenny, Dennis, Bernie, and Vicky all showed signs of dramatic improvement, it was Sean DeRose's confident delivery that earned him the mic. Later on, after a rigorous business building boot camp training session by Del Toro, the contestants got to celebrate as they got their first look at their brand new coaching programs that they had produced during the product reveal ceremony. Everyone enjoyed another amazing private dinner in the mansion and began to prepare for their weekend live seminar presentation. So get ready right here, right now. It's time for the keynote. Welcome to the keynote. I'm Delatoro McNeil II, peak performance expert, best-selling author, and renowned keynote speaker. You're getting ready to journey into the lives of nine people from all across the country who are coming to spend the week with me in this multi-million dollar mansion so I can teach them how to become full-time speakers and authors, trainers, and coaches. Public speaking is still the number one fear in America, Canada, and other parts of the world. You're about to journey into the lives of nine brave souls from extremely diverse backgrounds who all aspire to become professional speakers and authors in the lucrative industry of personal and professional development. I really want to leave my day job. It's time for me to take that next step. I believe that this is, this is the moment that I've been waiting for. contestants have come from all across America to have the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to be mentored by one of the best in the business today. They'll spend five days and nights in this multi-million dollar mansion being treated like royalty and enjoying the opulent lifestyle of top professional speakers, all while being trained, coached, and mentored by Delatoro McNeil himself. They all have one goal in mind, to become the keynote. Each contestant hopes to prove to Della Toro that they have what it takes to earn a coveted keynote speaking opportunity at Della Toro's annual Leaderpreneurship Conference, the Full Throttle Experience. Over the course of five days, these contestants will be learning insider secrets as Della Toro shares his coveted 12-step blueprint for building a million-dollar speaking empire. Not only is he great, but he pours his greatness into other people. It was a good learning process, you know, being with your peers, although it is a competition. While being coached and mentored by Della Toro and his esteemed professional colleagues, these contestants will be pushed to the limits as they are tasked with impromptu challenges, exercises, and experiences that will get them one step closer to being Della Toro's personal protege for one year. Who will crack under the pressure? Who will win the hearts of their audiences? Who will overcome their fears? Who will become the keynote? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to day number four of the keynote. Are you excited? Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Today, we're going to be jumping headlong into the fascinating world of book publishing. Every amazing keynote speaker is also a wildly successful published author. So I'm gonna be teaching you today insider secrets on how to self-publish powerfully and create multiple book projects and create product from those projects, as well as how to pitch and set yourself up to get a major publishing deal. You're gonna learn the ins and outs of the publishing business today. It's gonna to be incredible. And then later on, we're gonna actually have a wonderful, wonderful field trip. 
Your task for today is very simple. We're getting ready to take you to a major book publishing corporation. And you're gonna get a chance to meet the CEO of that organization. And you're gonna have two and a half minutes to pitch your book concept to their executive team as well as myself. Out of all nine of you, we will pick one winner. That one winner will also earn the mic and be one step closer to becoming the keynote. Welcome to day four of the keynote. It only gets better from here. Walk you through this real quick. The front is literally, this is like a skeleton for your book. So the first thing what you do is come up with what your title is, then subtitle, written by, forward by. This gives you a full blueprint for how your book needs to be laid out. Next page. 10 people that I know and have relationship with that I would like to endorse my book. You make a list of these people, now you know who to go after once it's time for your, when your book is in manuscript form and you got an executive summary, you now can send it to these people so they can start endorsing your book for you, okay? Go to people you know, go to people who have influence, go to people who have good relationships with. Make sense? People who believe in your concept, who believe in your message, whose brand is consistent with yours. Next page, uh, 10 facts about my target audience. <coughs> Who are you writing to? Tell me what their needs are, what their wants are, what their expectations are, what their struggles are, what their pain points are. Because once you know who your target audience is, you can write to them more profoundly. Right. I wrote Caught Between when I was caught. Hmm. And that's why people say, man, I feel like you're talking directly to me. Yeah. Come on, because you, know, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So if you're in a tight, painful place, yeah. write from that place because you'll be able to relate to people instead of getting free from it and they're like, oh, okay, I know what, I, I, I used to know what it was like. What fun, no, your emotion is different. Does that make sense? Yeah. Do not skip past the emotional connection with people. We're a spirit, emotional beings, we got intellect and all that stuff, but emotion is a huge part of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Maya Angelou said it, they'll forget what you say. They'll forget what you do. They won't forget the way you make them feel. They won't forget that. All right, next page, number four. Eight reasons why I'm the perfect author for this book. That will encourage you. What makes you the perfect author for this book? What makes you, what, what makes, well, how come nobody else can write this concept but you? What is it about you that's so awesome, so unique, so different, that you're the one and you're the only one that can produce it? Next page, five books to, uh, to which my book will be compared. It's important for you to be well read a little bit in this industry, why? Because you need to know how other people are gonna perceive your work. In what space are they gonna perceive it? Comparison is natural cognitive phenomenon. They're gonna compare. Oh, it's kinda like so-and-so. You see what I'm saying? They're gonna compare it. So when they compare it, who are they gonna compare it to? Right? Um, three authors who have a writing voice that's similar to mine. What does a writing voice mean? When you read the words, what voice, what message kind of, what, what kind of intonation do you hear, do you feel, do you get from that person? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? That's what a writing voice is. Mm -hmm. it's, that, it's, that, it's, it's what you hear in the ear. What are my tentative chapter titles? Guys, I've laid this all out for you. This is an architectural blueprint for a book. You with me? And it works. What, 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 what do I want my chapter titles to be? Now, what have I already taught you? So technically you could slash through that word chapter titles and you could change chapter titles to what, y'all? Workshop titles. Because the truth is, each one of y'all could probably do a mini workshop on the various chapters of your book. All right, so we're heading now to a a Printing who has been my local book publisher for over a decade. And the contestants just finished going through a very extensive training on book publishing. And now we're gonna see if they've got what it takes to go from learning about publishing to actually applying it. We get an opportunity to come in a professional book publisher environment and get to see how the whole, I guess the whole thing is done from nuts to bolts. Anything you do, if you want to be successful, you've got to sell it in whatever way. It doesn't mean selling in front of a publisher, but if you're going online to just let people know about it, you've got to do it in a way that is going to make people want to buy it. You've got to be selling on everything all the time. All right, so 
check this out. So Bill and I have worked out a wonderful prize for the winner of the pitch. And that particular prize is they're going to get 200 copies of their first book printed absolutely free. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, well, that doesn't sound like a big prize. Well, actually it is because to have 200 copies of your first book printed absolutely free, let's just say you charge $15 for that book. $15 times 200 copies and you don't have any cost of goods sold means literally Bill just put $3,000 in that person's pocket. All right, so we've made it here to a and Printing and uh, we're getting ready to go inside and meet Bill and his team and um, get the contestants in and get ready for the pitch. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Delatoro. Listen, welcome to a and Printing. I absolutely love this place. a and Printing has been my publishing house for over a decade. Many of my biggest books, my best-selling projects have been printed and published right here. And I'm so excited and delighted to invite you all here during this project to show you the behind the scenes of what the publishing industry really looks like. I'd like to introduce you to my dear friend, an amazing CEO, an amazing entrepreneur, and the leader and founder of a and Printing, Mr. Bill Ashby, who's gonna introduce his team to you. Give it up for Bill. Thank you and welcome everybody. I'd like to introduce this my son, Bill. And Billy is in charge of all of the online book uh, sales, all the internet, all the modern stuff he does. I'm the foot soldier from the old days, so <laughs> any questions about a computer, send them over this way, all right? And this is Mary Ellen, and she is our head um, uh, person who handles uh, any questions with the authors from the field, customer service, any question you have when you're doing a book, is it ready, when is it going to be ready, they've got a problem, you know, uh, both Mary and Ellen and Billy handle all these things. It's, it's not that difficult to give you a beautiful book, but you have to have the right equipment. The tour at A and A Printing was a awesome. We had a great time, and it was very interesting just to see how. Okay, yeah, you write the book, but to see what process it goes through to birth it. There was such a professional environment and a family environment. I'm very impressed with their establishment. In fact, all of my new business, I'll be doing it there. That was incredible to see how a book is printed from nuts to bolts, from start to finish, to see that your labor of love goes, goes through the process and to actually see somebody putting those pages together, that was an incredible experience, it really was. Yeah, most people assume that you just press an easy button and that's it, that's all you need to do. So it was really enlightening to see the process and also it made me even more inspired because I, I could see uh, how it's real, it's tangible, that, that I could have my, my book published there, so that was great, or printed there, so it'd be great. Okay, now that the tour is done, it's time for them to pitch it and pitch it good. Myself and the other executive judges are gonna be looking for who's got the best book title, subtitle, marketing plan, clear understanding of their target audience, and overall confidence in their presentation. Let's see how they do. Good afternoon. My name is Pastor Keys. I'm from San Antonio, Texas, and I want to thank you for your time today. I'm a pastor there, and I have a new book that I'd like to share with you. I had a flashback of my military days while doing that pitch. Um, I saw myself in front of the commander. You know, I wasn't expecting the environment. I, to be honest with you, I thought it was going to be an office with everybody sitting down sitting down at the uh, table together, something of that sort. Didn't know that I would be standing front and center with the bright lights. So there was a lot of pressure. The name of the book that I have is called Seven Keys for the Best of Your Life instead of the Rest of Your Life. And it's a book about a very important concept. We have so many people who are middle-aged or over 
who may feel as though they haven't accomplished all the things in life that they really dreamed about when they were kids. And I really want to capture that target of, I'll even say 35 and older, who still have a passion about something, but maybe didn't get the skill sets needed. And I want this book to specifically speak to their scenarios. So I did okay, but I didn't do my best because it threw me off guard for a moment. The greeting was kind of awkward, so there were some unknowns. But again, you know, I did my best. Very good. Thank you, Mel. Thank, Thank you very much. Appreciate I appreciate that. your time today. Very good. Absolutely. I'm Jenny Olding, and I am the President and CEO of Lifestyle Change International. And the book idea that I have is basically, it's going to be a non-traditional book, meaning that not the traditional six by nine, but a little pocketbook that people can put in their pockets or in their purses or in their bags. And the name of it is Rock Your Sales Style. 10 proven strategies to consistently land more sales and grow your bank account. And the reason why I'm writing this book is because I have been a, like a very successful sales rep for the past seven years. And what, the questions I get the most from my audiences, from small business owners, from new sales reps, sales reps who are average, is how do you do it? How do I make more money? How do I make six figures? How do I grow my business, grow my bank account? So therefore, this is basically that roadmap for them. It's gonna be something that they can refer to all the time, and it's, it's those 10 proven strategies when all of them work together, they are gonna produce more sales for these people. Um, my passion lies in helping them. I get asked all the time from small business owners, do you guys have any questions? And who's the target audience? Target audience is going to be small business owners, new sales reps, and any average sales rep or someone who's looking to improve their performance. You, might, you said your tribes. Are you uh, modeling this with Seth Godin's? I, I, I love Seth Godin. I don't have a complete model of what he has, but I love the idea of building a tribe and having people who you can count on. Absolutely. I think that's it. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Great job. Thank you. Do I stay? My name's Ira Funderburg, and I want to tell you how much I'm pleased to be here and thank you for the moments you have of your valuable time. The inspiration I got for this concept was from going to network meetings from Minneapolis to Sarasota. When I would ask people what they do for work, I kept getting one word. It was transition. You know what the unemployment rate is. There's ten times that many people afraid they don't, are going to lose their jobs tomorrow. The baby boomers moving towards retirement they have no idea how they're going to survive. Veterans coming back from war, they don't know what they're going to do. Disabled veterans, the market is huge for old dog, new tricks. Old dog, a term of endearment, D-A-W-G, to a trusted friend. New tricks, using technology, networking skills, and understanding resources. I came in, I think, yeah, more from a corporate sales background yeah, and having done some of that type of presentation to a more staunch type of crowd. I utilize that training and I think in this industry you've got to really relay your passion like Vicki has and such as she does such a great job at and being more real and letting myself be more revealed and explaining more about where that passion comes from. I would be honored to work with a corporation like yours. I understand who you are. I've researched you. I understand that you do major production. If I could work with you It'd be one of my honor to do everything in my power to make sure that you're successful. Thank you, Ira. All right, thank you. Appreciate thank it, buddy. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, the title of my book that I am writing is Resuscitate Your Confidence, Cutting Through Life's Adversity. And the reason I chose that title is because I used to be an operating room nurse, so I thought that would kind of appeal to nurses and women. Uh, the reason why I wanted to write this book is because of confidence levels in women. I've struggled confidence my whole lifetime and I think that this would be, I think that this would help a lot of women and also I was adopted and I would think it would help adoptees that are looking for families. That's originally why I wanted to write this book because of that need. What about your marketing plan? My, my, my marketing plan um, would be probably some YouTube videos and a lot of some social media because that's what I'm more comfortable with right now. I would like to start doing flyers, but I will have to work on that after this event and get those things started. Any questions? 
Thank you so much, Bernie. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. The title of my book is The Wealth Shift Project, Nine How-To Principles to Your Financial Success. As you all know, there is an incredible need right now for financial literacy. And with the average American working from paycheck to paycheck every day, and they're not necessarily bad people, they just don't have the system or the strategy to move their monies from where they want to where it, where it is to where they want to be, I believe that this book, The Wealth Shift Project, will help so many people. I was bombing and I knew it and how I felt was, why am I bombing? Because this was nothing new to me from a standpoint of talking about my book, talking about why I wrote the book, but the experience was different because I wasn't talking to somebody that I was trying to help. I was talking to somebody who I was trying to convince that they should produce my book. And it was a completely different experience and I didn't go in with the right mindset. So Hello, I'm Nikki Wilson. I'm the founder of Warriors Creating Wealth. I'm a Navy veteran and an Ironman triathlete. My book is called Achieve Your Big Idea, Seven Powerful Warrior Strategies to Lead a Successful Life. I was motivated to write this book for those who really want to live a more purposeful and successful life and achieve goals that they have deeply tucked inside their heart, whether it's a better job, a better career, or if they want to go out and run a marathon. I think a lot of this surge of confidence and courage that I'm feeling is a lot of the, of the encouragement of, of Dell and then also that you know, momentary headlock that I have to get every now and then to, to realize the importance of what I'm doing. And, and, and so I think that's what really said, okay, get my insecurities out of the way. You know, my message and those who I'm serving is by far more important. So it's for those who have already demonstrated these warrior strategies, but then also those who really want to propel themselves forward to achieve that big idea. Del Toro gives you not only the theory, but the practice of how to put it into practice. If you are not here, you need to be here. I'm proud of your evolution, man. Congratulations. And uh, we got a brand new graduate of uh, present day. The words you choose have power. Say my words have power. Every sentence counts. My life will never be the same. I believe that I can go and crush any stake that I'm put on. How many in this room are tired of average? Off the charts. You gotta see them. That's why I say it's not about you, y'all. It's about them. And you gotta be committed to do whatever it takes. In half a day, I guarantee you, the people in this room learn more about the speaking profession and how to present and deliver a good, solid message that makes impact. And we got two and a half days left. Speak from your heart, people can tell. And I don't believe in just tapping people on the shoulder. I believe in hitting people upside the head with a sledgehammer. That's my style. It matters how what you say lands on the other side. Your audience gives you all kinds of feedback. In my voice and my message, it's, it's a purpose, it's a value. This man knows what he's talking about. He crushed the stage today. I cannot even begin to tell you what a defining experience this has been. I knew when he offered this class, this is where I had to be. If this is something that sounds like you, I implore you to explore it at crushthestagelive.com. If you've got a message, you need to be here. Hello, I'm Brian Tracy, and I've just been through a wonderful presentation with Del Toro McNeil, and he has an incredible training program to teach speakers how to be great speakers. I've been in this field and teaching speakers for more than 10 years, and his program is one of the best in the entire country. If you want to be a great speaker, go to his program and go now. The pitch um, at A&A Printing, I, I thought I was ready for it. I had one um, method in my mind of how the process was going to go, my interviewing process or pitching process, but needless to say, that was not the case. My name is Vicki Carpenter Duncan, and I'm here to present to you the information concerning my book that I have an interest, interest in having printed. Um, the title of my book is called The Beauty of Entrepreneurship. Um, my subtitle to the book is um, The First Step Business Guide the first step business guide 
for entrepreneurs who are entering the beauty and barber industry. Um, well, I wrote this book because what I wanted to do is to help um, the people that are in the beauty and barber industry. In my research, I found that there wasn't a book that exists like the one that I have, um, mainly when anyone in the beauty and barber industry go to school, they come out with a certificate. Generally, people that are in this industry are people who maybe couldn't go to college or um, they just tried, they just decided to um, choose this, this, this route as a career and um, they need a little bit more help when they get out because there's nothing else to say, okay, now you finish with beauty and barber school, okay, this is what you do next. There's no bachelor's degree, no master's degree or anything like that for them to go on to. I also would like to market to um, the beauty schools, you know, so they can prepare themselves prior to getting out of school. Um, I'm currently um, at some of the local, um, some of the local beauty schools, I have visited them and the teachers, they think that it's an awesome idea. They think that it's a fabulous idea because we already have the market. We don't have to go out and create a market. Um, this industry, the beauty industry, the beauty and barber industry is a $1 trillion industry. When the economy was at its worst, this industry doubled. So we don't have to go out and search for a market. It already exists. When people are down and out and they, don't, and they need to feel good about themselves, they're going to go get their hair done, they're going to get their nails done, they're going to get a facial, they're going to do something to pick them up. The guys need trims with their beards, their hair needs to be cut every week, every two weeks. So this industry continues to make money when everything else is, the economy is down. Thank you so much, Vicky. We appreciate it. Well done. Very good. My name is Sir Charles Carey. Uh, the title of my book is The Cure for Cancer in Your Business and existence. The subtitle, How to Get Rid of Toxins in Your Life Dealing with People, Places, and Things. Now, the target market that I'm shooting for are people that either have low self-esteem and, as oddly as it seems, people that aspire to find their right place, uh, either in business, or in their professional lives, or even maybe even socially. Are there any questions for me? You have a minute left, sir. Okay. I was expecting a certain approach, and the valuable lesson I learned is, even if you know what's gonna happen, be prepared for the unexpected. That's one thing. The other lesson that I learned, and uh, it's a very important lesson, you never really have it. And I didn't truly prepare. Um, I knew what we were gonna talk. I knew what was expected of me. However, I thought it would be an easy pitch, and I didn't prepare. What else can I share with you? What makes this book so compelling I think is the fact that many people don't really know how to fill in the blank, how to get from point A to point B. And the book will be a great guide on helping them, guiding them, giving them some source of, source of inspiration, some sort of starting point on how to do that. Can you please state the title and subtitle one more time? Sure. The Cure for Cancer in Your Business and Existence. How to rid the toxins? Uh, excuse me, I'm saying it a little wrong. How to rid toxins from your life, people, places, and things. Excuse me. How to rid toxic people, places, and things from your life. And I was very disappointed with myself because I'm this perfectionist, you know. You know, try to stay on top of my game. Hi, my name is Dennis Burke and I'm excited to present to you my title for my very first book and it's the Concert Piano and I came up with that idea primarily because it can teach us how to play life if you will and the piano has 88 keys so from that I invented the concept of 88 keys to a better life the book itself is designed in such a way that it has 88 different inspirational little stories and messages including some quotes. It ranges from 
being persistent, to being brave, uh, to having a happy life, a good marriage, and it can fit and suit anybody uh, who needs some inspiration. And I look forward to the opportunity to working with you guys uh, in your effort to publish my book. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. Thank you. Well, great job, everybody. Uh, we, uh, we really had, it was kind of tough, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. It was uh, really, really challenging. You all did a fantastic job delivering your pitches. Uh, we were able to really assess each one of you all based on several criteria. The creativity of your title, how clear your subtitle was, your compelling rationale for why you have chosen to write this book, the target audience that you really seek to reach with this book, your marketing plan, and your overall confidence in your delivery. That's what we were looking for. And we had a lot of close, close numbers, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I would like to say overall, one of the things that I observed, and feel free to chime in, is that I think that each one of you all truly have a clear understanding of the fact that the world needs your message. And I think that that's fantastic. And because so many times people just want to write for the profit side but you all clearly have a passion to help people with your message. And I think that that's fantastic. So kudos to every one of you all for that. Absolutely. Yes, and, it, and each of it was nine different concepts, nine different messages. You know, it, there was, wasn't one of them that was even close to anything else. Yeah, there was no overlap. N nobody's book was going to be like anybody else's. So that made it interesting to judge as well. And, and I had everybody pretty much down as a, at least a nine or a ten full score for uh, compelling rationale because it really did sound like at least all of you really believed in what you were writing about and, and have a, a vision for going to get it. So that's really the main thing is how strong you feel about the book that you wrote. So that I thought was good as this group all felt like they really believed in what they wrote and that's got to be step one in my mind. Yeah, I was, I'm sure that if uh, this group were to come back in six months, we couldn't make a decision. Uh, it would, it really, no, really, it, it's a good thing we caught some of you on your first day because uh, it was that close and all your personalities are terrific. Uh, you know, I've been 45 years developing my message and believe me, the first time I pushed a wagon in, in, uh, on 47th Street in New York City, it, was, uh, it wasn't a pretty sight. But the thing is, the more you, you practice and practice and practice, your pitch in your in your area pretty soon it becomes a pitch and everything you just know it better than you know anything else in your life nobody can throw you off yeah. and uh, then you'll really start having fun you won't have to worry about remembering yeah. uh, oh what did I forget it all goes away but only with time yeah. and uh, you, I think you're all very brave for for getting into this business it's tough getting up in front of a you're gonna get up in front of two three hundred people <laughs> and they paid money to be there, right. you know, so they expect to see someone that, uh, you know, is really confident. I think this group, you're all going to be in that category. So I'm proud of all of you. That was, that was great. Again, everyone did a fantastic job, but there's only Bill, as you know, Mary Ellen and Billy. We can only award the mic to one person. So um, unanimously, we have decided that the winner of this particular activity of Pitch It, Pitch It Good, is Vicki Carpenter Duncan. <laughs> Congratulations, Vicki. <laughs> Believe it or not, they were highly impressed and I won the mic, yay! We'd like to express what it is that really stood out about your particular presentation. Uh, unanimously, we all agreed that you had a confidence in your message. You had a very, 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 very clear understanding of who your target audience is. Your book title alone sold the deal. Some of us had some concerns about your subtitle, so you can work on that a little bit. But what was very evident was your marketing plan, not only to go on the typical social media and email, but you were very clear about the fact that you wanted to hit the streets. You wanted to go beauty school to beauty school, barbershop to barbershop, and sell your books and sell your message. And how brilliantly, in fact, you partnered the book pitch with a resource you already owned. That was very, very well done. 
So unanimously, we agreed that you deserve to be the winner of this competition. Now, uh, our great CEO here, Bill, has um, agreed to give the winner of this particular contest a very special prize. Bill, will you please share with Vicki what she has won? Well, Vicki, when you get your book all together, and I'm sure it's pretty close to being there right now, uh, what we'd like to do for you is, uh, regardless of how many books you print, we're going to give you 200 free books to sell. On top of that, I think the most exciting part for me was that when I was blessed to learn that um, I was um, Mr. Bill and um, a and Printing was um, awarding me 200 free books for my new book, The Beauty of Entrepreneurship. So I, I'm just so excited. I was crying like crazy all on camera. So. But it just was so wonderful and you know he was very inspirational and he said he'd see this book going very far and um, that I presented what was necessary to win the pitch so I am so grateful. I was happy for, for, for Vicki for when I, I think she did a great job but uh, I was really like you don't always got this you know and uh, so you know it's all good you know I, I expressed to the team earlier you don't always do as well as you want in a competition, and it's not a true measure of who you are, but when you fall short, you have to accept it for what it is. So I accept it for what it is. That won't happen again. <laughs> and, and you know what? I mean, I think that's it. I think we can call it a day. Bill, unless there's anything else you wanted to say. You well, know, I'll tell you. What I want to say is this, that you've, I really want to thank you for taking the time to come in. You're all great, and I hope to hear from you again. Uh, and for everyone else, uh, that we had, this was so close in, in a lot of areas and you were all, you're all wonderful. I'm gonna give the first 50 books to all the rest of you, all right? So, now look at what else we can do for you. We've got Billy, we've got myself. If you need help with that, with that title, we can help you. If you've got help with your cover, we've got people that can help you with that. Uh, we'd like to hear from you and uh, we'll do everything we can do to get you on, get you on the road. You, you've made the best first step, <laughs> All right. but we'll, uh, but maybe we can help you uh, on the back end. And as you continue, uh, you know, I hope we get to to deal with you, uh, wonderful people, for a long time. So, thank you for spe for coming down. So, so. In essence, each one of you all will be walking away with 50 copies of your first book absolutely free. So 50 times a $15 book price is how much? $750 in each one of your accounts just for participating in the pitch. It was extremely good preparation what we received at ANA today. While doing that presentation, uh, it prepared me better for the future, I believe. Uh, we received a complimentary prize from a and Printing for uh, 50 books. No uh, requirement or no limitations on the size of the book. So I thought that was uh, really, really uh, honorable, totally unexpected. Uh, I look forward to uh, working with them because my plans for my upcoming book was to work with a, a, a publisher, excuse me, a distributor that I already have a relationship with. And I am familiar with ANA uh, printing. However, uh, it's going to be the beginning of another relationship, and hopefully one that will go well. So I look forward to it. To go into ANA printing, bomb, and still be blessed with an incredible gift that they provided us with 50 free books. I mean, really, that was just an incredible gift that they provided. And I, 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 we were all just so gracious. And certainly, we will take that benefit any day. All right, so we just left a and Printing, and the contestants had a chance to give their two-and-a-half-minute pitch, and Vicki Carpenter-Duncan was the winner. She won the mic, and she won 200 copies of her first book printed absolutely free, which is really the equivalent 
of a $3,000 grand prize, which is <laughs> phenomenal. And uh, she was very, very emotional about winning that. And um, the contestants were very uh, proud of her as well. I was excited because I was like, sweet, I don't have to pay my bill from Tuesday. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just picked up a hundred books. But at the same time, um, you know, when Bill came up to me and said, we'll just put, you know, we'll make sure we'll take care of the rest of your account. I said, no, I want to challenge myself. That will force me to write this next book. I said, do not apply it to what I currently have there. So uh, good for you. I'm ecstatic. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm ecstatic There's to have the opportunity. Yeah. Awesome. Because you want that that motivation to right. you have this opportunity. Right. Why not? It seems like you'd be throwing it away if you did. Yeah. You know, if, if you were like, oh, just apply it to what's already there. Like, you know, the whole point of was pitching that, and we obviously all have ideas. So it's right. like, especially after that, it's like, doesn't it make you want to go home and write it? Even after all the times you sat and said, I hate writing, this stinks, I hate the kick in the flow. I mean, you're like, 50 free books that, you know, like, even like with Vicky. $3,000 check, you know what I mean, like $750 check, $1,000 check for free. This will definitely spur me on because I tend to be a bit of a procrastinator and since this is my first attempt at writing a book, I've been really having some issues getting in the flow. So having this opportunity is going to get me to move forward and stop making excuses and thinking of other things to do besides sitting down and doing what I'm supposed to be doing and this is just like a kick in the, you know what. So I'm actually looking forward to talking to the candidates and, and the, a few of them actually probably need to talk to at the seller because I saw some things as they were giving their pitches that I think will really add value to their future development. And um, there were certain people who I thought were very confident in on the stage that in this environment were actually very, were almost the opposite um, and vice versa. So I think this is a wonderful exercise to show the importance of being able to really be, uh, to deliver regardless of the environment that they're placed in as a speaker. Everyone loves a speaker. I tell you what, when I go to conferences and conventions and leadership events and, and venues all across the country and around the world, I got to tell you, one of the coolest things is to get a chance to introduce myself as the keynote speaker, to see the reaction on people's face because you literally are the rock star for that moment. So I think it's incredible the gift and the blessing that it is to be the keynote speaker at a conference or event because you are, you're the it person for that particular event. Now, with much power comes much responsibility. So I believe it's really important that as speakers and as, as communicators and as experts, we truly take responsibility for the fact that, yeah, you've got the limelight, yeah, your picture's in the program, yeah, your bio's there, yeah, they're raving about your website, but are you there to create an impact and change lives? Because at the end of the day, that's what it's really all about. So I think it's awesome because everybody does love a speaker. But my friend, it's important that we also understand the responsibility that it means to be a speaker. Because we're there to change people's lives. All right, everybody, get ready because yada yada is one of my favorite team building exercises that I do all across the country. And I wanted my speakers to go through this program because speakers have to understand the importance of although they give a solo presentation, they have to work in tandem with other speakers to create a wonderful conference experience or convention experience for another client. So I'm making them work together in this experience. Personalities are gonna come out, uh, conflict is gonna arise, but at the end of the day, they're all working towards one common goal, which is to complete the puzzle. The question is, can they do it by working together and working individually? Let's see. All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to what I believe to be one of the coolest team building exercises that you can ever experience. Uh, we've been talking a lot today about publishing. We've been talking today about uh, getting our message out there. Mm -hmm. And I really want to focus here on, uh, towards the latter half of day four, on the importance of us really working together and the fact that we need each other and the fact that we all have something to bring to the table. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what I'd like to offer you all is a challenge. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put a 30-minute time limit on this challenge. Okay. Okay. And what I'm going to ask you all to do is simply obey some really interesting and unique instructions. 
I'm going to give you all slips of paper. Your objective is just to take the sheet of paper and do not share it with anyone. You will receive a piece of paper and only you needs to see what's in it. Do not share it with your peers. Now, this is a special activity because I'm going to change the way you communicate. As soon as this task begins, as soon as this, this task begins, basically as soon as I give you the supplies that you need. As soon as I give you the supplies that you need, the task begins. Now, you will not be able to say anything other than two words, yada, yada. Everything about your communication has to be in the form of two words, yada, yada. You can say yada, yada as much as you want and any intonation that you want, but all you can say is yada, yada. The project is done when everyone unanimously agrees that their individual piece has been 100% fulfilled. Sound like a deal? Mm -hmm. That's a deal. Good. Very good. Yeah. Begin. Yada yada. Yada yada. Yada yada. Yada yada.
Yada yada. Yada yada. Let's take, let's take, let's take keynote on three. One, two, three. Keynote! <laughs> what did it feel like when you were going through that and, you know, because you, you guys did that pretty quick, yeah. which is awesome. Wow. I like record fast. Yeah. I, have, I have groups that take 45 minutes to an hour wow. to finish this. Wow. I mean, frustrations. I mean, look at my poor lizard. I mean, <laughs> people, people have literally fought over the lizard. I mean, to, to the point where they've torn it. And you guys did that pretty quick. You guys did a great job. How do you think you did that so fast? What, what was it about your group, your team, that allowed you to complete that so quickly? They communicated well with each other without even saying words. Without even using words, OK. We know each other really well over the past week. Mm -hmm. Learning their body languages and you know their intonations and things of that nature just really helped us move fast. Good, and good. Trusting, trusting your peers because we have been so close. Oh yeah. You know, when someone moves something, you trust them. You didn't really fight them. You're like, all right, go ahead, let's see what happens. Good. You respected their yada yada. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you respected their yada yada. <laughs> I respect your yada. I respect it. <laughs> and patience to wait to see what everybody was going to do. Ah, patience to wait. Very good. Yeah. Observation. Observation. How did it feel? No, what, what, any other thoughts on that? I, yeah, I what think we, we focused just on that only and shifted our focus from ourselves personally and whatever else we got going on. Very good. Very good. Yeah. So, so, since, so, so it wasn't about you and your individual piece. Right. It truly had to be about a what was all, a group effort and what everybody brought to the table. Right. Yeah. And that's what this is really all about. That's what this industry is about. You know, we've been talking about publishing today. Publishing is a team effort packaging your message, putting it out there. It's a team, I mean, you, you're gonna be dealing with graphic designers and editors and copywriters and, and marketing people and PR people, all the stuff that, and printers and all the stuff that goes along with publicists, all the stuff that goes along with you publishing your message to the world is gonna take a team effort. And everybody carries a different piece of this amazing puzzle. Does that make sense? Right, right, yeah. Even in your own business, you're gonna need people that have various skill sets in various areas that aren't going to be like yours or even similar to yours. Mm -hmm. And if you're so focused on your piece and doing you and that's it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're going to miss out on a lot of really amazing opportunity. You'll always remember this experience that we had together because you'll always know somebody's got something that I need. And the, pub the puzzle's not complete until that person contributes their piece. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So even tomorrow morning, as you go into your showcase, each one of you all brings something different to the team, something different to the stage to create an overall showcase for that audience to enjoy. Does that make sense? So it's important that you remember that, set each other up for success. You feel me? And if you do that, and if you do the work and you're willing to get in the trenches, isn't it interesting how you couldn't do this and stand up with a nice suit on and be suited and booted? You had to get out of the shell, take the cape off, and get in the trenches and work together and get on your hands and knees and do the work. Does that make sense? Yes. I need you to be willing to get on the floor and get in the trenches of your business to make your dream happen, to make your vision happen, to make the dreams and, and, and visions of other people happen. I'm proud of you guys. Great job. Awesome. Love it. Woo yada yada yada. Yada yada. yada. Oh, oh, oh. Somebody help me off this guy. Right, 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 right. My knee went. Yeah. Knee got numb. You're like, oh Lord. Delatoro gives you not only the theory, but the practice of how to put it into practice. If you are not here, you need to be here. I'm proud of your evolution, man. Congratulations. And uh, we got a brand new graduate of uh, present stage. <laughs> The words you choose have power. Say my words have power. Every sentence counts. My life will never be the same. I believe that I can go and crush any state that I'm put on. How many in this room are tired of average? Off the charts. You gotta see it. That's why I say it's not about you, y'all. It's about them.
And you got to be committed to do whatever it takes. In half a day, I guarantee you, the people in this room learn more about the speaking profession and how to present and deliver a good, solid message that makes impact. And we got two and a half days left. Speak from your heart, people can tell. And I don't believe in just tapping people on the shoulder. I believe in hitting people upside the head with a sledgehammer. That's my style. It matters how what you say lands on the other side. Your audience gives you all kinds of feedback. In my voice and my message, it's, it's a purpose, it's a value. This man knows what he's talking about. He crushed the stage today. Cannot even begin to tell you what a defining experience this has been. I knew when he offered this class that this is where I had to be. If this is something that sounds like you, I implore you to explore it at crushthestagelive.com. If you got a message, you need to be here. Hello, I'm Brian Tracy, and I've just been through a wonderful presentation with Del Toro McNeil, and he has an incredible training program to teach speakers how to be great speakers. I've been in this field and teaching speakers for more than 10 years, and his program is one of the best in the entire country. If you want to be a great speaker, go to his program and go now. Deal with the decision maker and the decision influencer. You know, so often in business we're taught always deal with the decision maker. And I believe that and I practice that consistently as much as I can in my business. But the truth is, there are gonna be times when you can't talk directly to the decision maker when you're trying to get a booking for a speaking engagement or media appearance or something like that. So when you cannot deal directly with the decision maker for whatever reason, it's important that you learn how to build quality relationship with the decision influencer. Now the decision influencer can be anyone from an executive assistant to a VP of sales. It could be anyone from a meeting planner to an association executive, the person, or it could be the person that was in your audience, but maybe that person that was in your audience that's already heard you does not have the power to sign the contract. They are a decision influencer. It's important that you not be so gung-ho on getting strictly to the decision maker that you overlook the power of the decision influencer. My friend, as you seek to get more bookings and, and to grow your business, it's important that you connect with the decision maker, but you also connect with the decision influencer. Jenny Olding, I need to see you in the cellar. Jenny O, what's up? Hey. How are you? A little scared. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I be straight with you? Yes, please. All right. A couple things that I've noticed. You are amazing. You know it. Uh, you've got tremendous gift in this industry. You know that too. However, there's something holding you back from doing the thing that you know you need to do, but it's the thing that you know is gonna put you out there. And what you do a great job of is you, you mask a necessary action with energy and with activity in other areas. So in other words, you camouflage it. So you have the genio that the world sees and the world celebrates and the energy and all that and great hype. But I see past the hype and I see past the energy and I'm like, okay, when is she gonna really put herself out there authentically? I've asked you a zillion times for a kick butt video of you mm -hmm. speaking. I can't get it. I can get fitness. I can get coaching on nutrition. I can get everything else that's not gonna take you in the direction you're trying to go. Mm -hmm. You've mastered all these courses from all these other gurus but when is Ginny O gonna really take Ginny O seriously enough to say, I'm worth sitting down and knocking this out instead of being busy doing stuff that looks good but is not producing the result that I need? What's the, what's the blockage? What's stopping you? Mm, I guess, you know, I think it's the fear of the fact that I have a current job and I wanna have this job and if I get too busy with this, 
career, then what about that one? And getting scared? And I don't leaving? buy it. I don't know. I don't buy it. Afraid to put myself out there? Possibly. Afraid to look stupid? Yeah. That's the bigger one. Why? Mm -hmm. I don't know. You have loving family. You got mm -hmm. great support. Mm -hmm. So where does it come from? Wanting to be perfect, not being vulnerable. Because I know that that's my weakness in this. Right, right. Mm -hmm. You think, you think people are going to judge you because of a video, promo video? No, I know that now, but leading up to that, I may have thought that. Why? And I didn't really want to do the tedious work of it. Right. Didn't want to sit down and do it. There's more fun things to do. There's more, there's more um, things that make you look busy mm -hmm. that are not going to produce mm -hmm. the result you need. Right. And I just want you to get to the place to where you do the things in your business that you know you need to do so that you can really get yourself to that next level. Mm -hmm. And I think that your video is what's stopping you. Mm -hmm. And you know it. Mm -hmm. But you've known that for months. It's been on my to-do list for months. Yeah. From day to day. But why do we move? Why do we move? Why do we procrastinate on stuff? I mean, you know this stuff. Mm -hmm. You teach on rock your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So why do we procrastinate? Because we don't really want to do it. The question mm -hmm. is why? It's not that it's TZ. You can outsource it. You've outsourced mm -hmm. other stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm asking you to tell me what the real deal is. Why don't you want to break through this board? Because you're know. afraid of being successful? Possibly. Why? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know doesn't work. Mm. That's a cop-out. You wouldn't let one of your coaching students get away mm -hmm. with I don't know. Mm -mm. So I can't. Mm, don't think my videos are good enough because they're all at Toastmasters and Rotary. Okay, so cool. All right, mm -hmm. good. So what that means is we need to create bigger stages, mm -hmm. bigger opportunities. Mm -hmm. All right, and if that's what you're going to do, fine. Mm -hmm. But say, okay, that's what the issue is. Not that I don't want to do it. Not that it's tedious. Get rid of all those excuses mm -hmm. and say, I want a video that shows me in a bigger stage, a bigger platform that really represents who I really feel like I am. So what you're really saying to me is, Dell, I feel like I've kind of outgrown, you know, that level of the business, mm -hmm. and I want something that shows me on a higher platform. And if that's the case, then you need to start taking the action to market yourself on a higher stage or platform mm -hmm. so that you can get those, because that doesn't just come. You have right. to earn those stages. Right. It takes time to earn those stages. But if you're willing to earn those stages, you can get the footage. Mm -hmm. That's something that graphic design, you can't get that on Fiverr. You can't get that, right. you, can't, you can't outsource a big stage. Right. It takes time. Mm -hmm. But if you work your butt off, you'll get there. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, be excellent where you are mm -hmm. and celebrate that and be happy with that. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Yeah, That's feel the you. missing piece. I've got tons it's not, of it's not. It's not mm -hmm. all this other stuff. It's that. That's mm -hmm. the key to unlock the next level of this game for you. Mm -hmm. And to get you submitted for conferences and all the other things that you really want to get into, that's what you got to do. Mm -hmm. A lot of eyes are on you and your career. Mm -hmm. I feel it. It's pressure, isn't it? I feel it. And especially <laughs> at this point. I mean, it's like there's no turning back. Yeah. I've been talking to Vicky and some of the other contestants, and there's no turning back. You know, I definitely, it's going to be hard to go to work on Monday. Yeah. Because it's like I am not in it at all. Yeah. Not this work, yeah. but my day job. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. I understand. So, so if, if, if that's how you feel, mm -hmm. you got to hustle for the dream. Because mm -hmm. whatever you water grows. Mm -hmm. Make me a deal right now. Nothing else gets crushed, scratched off the to-do list until this is done. Got it. It'll be the first thing I do. Promise. Promise. <laughs> proud of you. Thank you. I'm proud of you. Thank you. There you go. On the next episode of the keynote, just when the contestants thought that they had the evening to relax, I firmly believe in the importance of being overprepared for a live seminar. So we made the contestants get back on the mini bus and go and see, physically see, put their eyes on the room where they're gonna be delivering their live seminar for the finale. Upon their surprise, they get to the hotel and realize that the room is not set up, therefore they have to play the role of the hotel staff and get this event ready for the next morning. With that being the case, who's got time to actually prepare for their presentation? This is a challenge. 
Watch as the contestants have to push themselves. And finally, after a long week of preparation and competition, the Saturday Success Seminar is here. And the first four contestants get to show their stuff in their 10 minute keynotes to their own audience. I'm looking to see who can handle the pressure. I'm looking to see who can handle the lights. I'm looking to see who can handle the logistics of project management and speech preparation because this lets me know who's gonna rise to the top, who's gonna rise to the occasion, who deserves to be my protege, and ultimately who deserves to become the keynote.